There's not a time of year that I've spent more time in the tree than during the whitetail rut. So from the first week of November all through the third week of November is probably one of my favorite times of the year to be able to hunt. And in my opinion, it's the highest odds to kill a mountain buck in the big woods. It's one of those times that the deer are the most vulnerable. I mean, anybody, there's a reason why when people take vacation to, to hunt whitetails, it's typically during the rut because of the odds being up in your favor. And with the other seasons being difficult to pattern deer and to be able to get on bucks consistently, the rut, if you're looking for a specific deer, the rut may not be your best chance. But if you're looking for a good deer or um, any deer that fits into your category on what you're willing to shoot, the rut is, is by far has the best opportunity, in my opinion. And with the rut, the bucks are moving, they're covering ground, and with, with a relatively low deer density in a lot of the big woods areas, deer, these bucks are going to travel a lot further than any, any other time of the year. I, I remember I, that I killed a buck in 2009 that where I had camera pictures of this deer in the summer and to where I killed him on November the 14th was about four and a half miles away as a crow flies. So these deer are traveling. They're utilizing the ridge systems. They're utilizing the creek bottoms and they're covering ground to be able to find hot does. The one thing with the rut though is it's a time of high anticipation with a, a lot of low points, a lot of points of not seeing anything, getting frustrated, second guessing yourself. And what I've learned is the rut requires a lot of patience and consistency to be successful. To start out, I'm looking at the maps to e-scout. So I'm getting on to Onyx and I'm trying to understand the best potential rut locations. So to pull up the map that I've been using in a particular area that I've been using for all of the other seasons, I want to be able to show you some locations that jump out to me as places that look relatively good for the rut. And when it comes to e-scouting those locations, there's a couple things that I'm keeping in mind. And those things are does and also travel corridors and any sort of funnels that you can find. Funnels in the big woods are not the same or as well defined as you would find in farm country and swamps and other areas that have a mixture of open and hardwood terrain. So one of the things you can utilize in the big woods is the terrain and where that butts up against vegetation features. So when I'm looking, I want to find those edges again I'm talking about edges in every video for a reason and looking at this map so I'm looking at this particular area and there's some spots that I had marked for the pre-rut a couple potential scraping locations that could double as rut locations because all right you see a steep draw that's coming up here and then it looks like it flattens out a little bit for a bench the more mature bucks tend to travel just over the edges of the hills and or on the top end of the benches but they will also walk through the the middle of them depending on how thick that cover is which is difficult to tell from the map but anyways i'm going to mark these general locations like this spot right here is looks like there's a, a stretch here it's about from the edge of the cut about 100 yards before it starts really to drop off and why why that that spot kind of comes to me is because once you get in there you might be able to find a little bit more of that funnels that maybe there's some thick cover that winds through that that relatively flat area maybe you're finding that they're actually traveling inside of that cut a little bit so once you get the boots on the ground you can confirm that but that's an area that i want to mark i'm in this spot that i had an idea that some bucks might be betting out around this point so I decided to come out at the top of the hill right behind me here and walk around this crest. And what I ended up finding was a really defined buck bed here. So what, what this spot has is, so you have the wind advantage coming over your back 
and it can hear anything coming from its back. And then you got a visual out in front, which I'll show you. You can see all the way out in front and just has, you can say something came from behind them. You jump down over this way, trail heading down over this way and they're gone into this abyss of these hemlocks. And it's just a really good definition buck bed. Got this big tree to its back and uh, I truly think one of the, the big deer that I'm hunting uses this bed from time to time. So after finding that buck bed out on the point, I started moving around the side of the ridges and I'm over on, I guess what would be the west side of the ridge. And as I'm coming around here, I had found a spot that really caught my attention. The reason being is it, it pinches down the movement. So right below me, we have a really steep bank that goes down to the creek. And right above me, we have a brand new logging cut. So there's only about a hundred yards in between these two areas. And it's just, it's real thick hemlocks. It's steep. There's a heavy trail that comes through not far away from that buck bed probably about like I said three four hundred yards I think this is it would be a dynamite spot come the rut uh, even pre-rut coming through here but mostly I'd say this would be a rut cruising spot because of the funnel area the does will be feeding in that cut as that as they start to clear out some of the area and some of the new growth comes up as they leave some of the tops there so how I would actually set up on this is I would get on the upper end of the trail here so I could shoot down to the trail and I'm only talking a good 10 12 yard shot it's close it's thick and you're probably not going to see a whole lot of deer but there's a good chance that during that November 5th through 14th range that you could really have some good rut action I really like this tree for the setup so you get this double hemlock that's coming up I can get from the back side of my saddle come up that kind of in the crotch of the tree there so I have complete cover I can shoot down in between this way I can shoot to the back side down that way and I can also shoot up above to that new cut so I have a lot of cover it's close we're only talking a 10 12 yard shot but I think it keeps you concealed enough that you could get away with it and really up your chances I typically like to set up on the leeward sides of the hills. So if the, in this particular video, if the wind's coming from the north or coming from the northwest, this is an area that I would look at. But if the wind was traveling from the east, the southeast, the northeast, over here might be a little bit of a better location. And as you can see again, flattens to more of a steep draw there. And in addition to just them traveling horizontally, if they're coming from an additional ridge, they'll either come up the point, they may come up the side of this draw, and you wanna find where the most travel patterns are going to meet in one particular location. If you've watched any other rut videos, then you've probably heard the term saddles thrown around a lot. And saddles can be great, saddles can be a spot because you have two draws that are coming up and a low spot that kind of creates the hourglass look so if I turn on the topo you can kind of see this hourglass feature here with some higher spots on the top and the bottom and then you get into the lower spot there which creates an area for them to go over into the next drainage and then to also run along this side here to be able to come in well the thing about saddles are is if it's open then it's again bucks will do some crazy things during the rut and they're not thinking completely right so they can travel through the open and i'm not going to say they won't but i'm looking for cover that is on either side of these saddles that kind of meets up with that terrain more so than anything on the the wide open saddles if your goal is to shoot a two or three year old buck which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but if that's your goal then you don't need to look at it, I guess, as much detail as if I were to be hunting a four plus year old deer where you want a little bit of cover for them to wind through it. I always like to set up on the edge of that cover and that terrain so that I can shoot into the cover, but also shoot into some more of the open spots as well to be able to have that opportunity depends on how they're moving through it. I've found that 
the the older deer if there is some thick cover available even if it's some brush they're going to travel through that more than anything unless they're on a doe and they're chasing the doe and the doe just takes them wherever and at that point it's difficult to to really figure out where they're going to be running at that point so those are a couple examples that I would have towards the top here, and you can find uh, a bunch more on the on the map. But for time's sakes, I'm gonna move down a little bit. So this particular area has a system where it's kind of flat, and then it's just steep all the way down to the bottom with not a lot of bench systems. Um, besides, like say down here, it looks like there might be a little bit of a bench. So I, I may want to look at uh, a potential location, say. Um, looks like maybe even down in here, you got a little bit of a draw, and then you also have um, that you know a little bit of a flatter bench that runs around. So I might put just for the map travel corridor, and there's a, a feature here to locate pinch point. So I'll put that icon on to go check it out. And you want to check those different levels if possible. I know like especially in the mountains of Virginia and a little bit further south, you have some more levels as the elevation is a little bit higher. So it doesn't always necessarily mean towards the top. That could be on the upper third. That could be on the, the lower third. It can be in, in a bunch of those different places. So mark those places on the map. The last place that I'll talk about is the creek bottoms. So when you find an area, like I marked in the early season here, that it could be in apple trees in these open type bottoms here. These also have, look, one, two, three, four points that run to this location, which the bucks could run off of that to go up to another one. They have to cross at some point. If you can find those places with a beaver pond um, or, if you're, or something else that funnels them to that, that creek crossing, those areas can also be really excellent. For more information on hunting creek bottoms specifically, I did an entire video in last season's Mountain Buck Scouting series on the YouTube channel for you to be able to check out. Well, I'm here in this creek bottom and this is an absolute textbook creek bottom rut funnel spot. So I'm gonna tell you why. So right behind me, I have a big scrape, giant licking branch broke off. You can see the ground all pawed up from last fall. And then also have a bunch of big rubs and a trail crossing here. So you have a trail, this whole grade that runs, the grade runs parallel to the creek. And then you have the crossing that comes across all at this spot. So you can get to, I think there's like three or four points right around me that all come down to this spot. Great spot for the rut. And so how I would set up with this is by utilizing one of those trees right up above there. And so these trees, you wanna be up and above the trail at this point to be able to shoot down to it. And there's not really any other places they can walk. There is a little bench above, so I would like to be able to shoot to that just in case they were up a little bit higher. But my main shot would be down in this creek bottom to be able to get them in that mid-November time frame when they're cruising. Other than travel, the other thing that, that I pay attention to is doe bedding. Where are potential doe beddings, bedding areas that and feeding areas to see where those bucks might be checking on those does. So I, the same thing that I was trying to do in the early season is, is look for certain food sources. So like this top of this hill here looks really good as far as maybe being a potential oak flat and uh, in the in the early season video, I showed how you can kind of identify some of those oak trees. So say I would mark this right here. Foods, food source, and I'll put a question mark next to it. No, I have not confirmed that yet. I'll leave that red and be able to go in and check that out. The other thing is bedding. So doe bedding can be as sporadic as anything that I've found. They typically, sometimes like in a bowl, so like a bowl that you have here, does will bed in that group kind of in a circle. Uh, they might bed on the edge of these clear cuts in the, inside of the thick cover there, just kind of, again, in more of a circle. And sometimes they'll bed out on these points above the bucks. I don't know. 
this is this may just be my opinion but it seems to be that i've found a lot of doe bedding out on the points where the bucks might be over the edge where they can look down the does will be on top i almost feel like the bucks set it up that way so that it's a warning sign when they kick off off the top of the hill and run past them they know to get uh get going and take off as well but doe bedding is something that is difficult for me to really be able to pinpoint on the map that's where the boots on the ground part of it comes in but if you mark a bunch of areas on the map prior to going into the spot then you can really help figure out those areas that you want to hit when scouting and then kind of adapt from there to be able to figure out a solid game plan going into the fall at this point it's time to take what you learned e-scouting and go in and confirm your thoughts and when you're going in there be sure to go around check out those spots because a lot of times on the map it's difficult to see those very small minute kind of funnels or benches that run around those systems so this is where you're going in to confirm that and see find that joe bedding find those travel corridors and understand that movement I utilize trail cameras as I do with any other season, just as much during the rut. But particularly, I'm not moving my cameras from my scrape setups because mostly from a time standpoint, everyone's limited on time and it's difficult to get in and move them essentially those places. So when I'm looking at the scrapes that I'm setting up my cameras on for the pre-rut and everything else, I, I'm usually keeping them in those spots. A lot of those places, as I showed on the map, will double as rut spots depending on how that terrain funnels the, the movement there. So essentially I just leave my cameras in those places. I seem to find my trail cameras die down a little bit during the peak of the rut. The deer aren't on the same trails. They may be moving away from the scrape a little bit, just scent checking it. They're not as worried as leaving their scent down as they are just zombie walking for does. So I, I'm, the cameras, I'm leaving them in the same places I would during the pre-rut on those community scrapes on some of those areas. If you were specifically focusing on the rut, I would also move them to more of those funnel locations. And if there's not a scrape there, I would build one. Build a big mock scrape and put your camera on it to be able to see what's, what's coming through at that point. But don't rely on your cameras as much during that time frame. They could move 40 yards away from that camera and you wouldn't see them. So again, use cameras with a grain of salt a little bit and it can still be an effective part of your strategy. Just don't rely on it wholeheartedly. When I was scouting on the web map on Onyx, I found this big cut up on the top. So on the very top of the hill, there was a, a giant clear cut that looked kind of younger and by estimating i'd say it's probably about a three-year-old cut and when you look down over the side of the this cut you start getting into where the terrain edge meets the vegetation edge so uh, what i'm doing now is walking the edge of this cut and trying to find places that funnel deer movement so with some steep drop-offs below and then the cut up above that's so thick that i think the deer could use it to get away but i don't think they're regularly just walking through the middle of this cut so, which is actually used to an advantage. When I'm working the edges of these cuts, so when I say working, I'm, I'm just walking around the outside. I'm looking for big rubs on the outside, meaning that maybe there's a, a big buck that might be using the edge of this for bedding. Um, I'm also looking for big scrapes too, in correlation to, again, those vegetation and those terrain edges. Trying to find as much of those things in one place are, are just upping my odds of opportunity when it comes to the rut. When it comes to the rut, there's a couple key things you're looking for. You're looking for does and you're looking for travel corridors, funnels that they're gonna keep the deer going through a certain area as they're traveling from doe bedding area to doe bedding area and searching for those. So in this place that I found here, kind of found the general area on the map from home where it looked like there was a steep draw coming up a little bit of a bench that met the draw right at the point of this clear cut and what it did was it made a very natural funnel and on the map i got the general area marked came in to check it out and within the general region i was able to find a really good side hill trail that comes across here 
as well as a few big scrapes. These scrapes are huge, just running around here, decent sized licking branch, but that's not the main focus of during the, the rut is the scrapes, but they're still gonna be checking them as they're cruising the trail that's slightly below here. So you got the wind coming here across, coming out of the north, blowing down over, and they can run that trail just below it and scent check the scrape without even coming to take a look at it. How I would set up for this scenario would be actually on the downside of it. This clear cut is so thick along this edge here, it doesn't look like the deer are gonna be traveling inside of that thick cover. But below me, we got a bunch of young beech trees that are creating some good covers or traveling along this open edge. And I wanna be on the bottom side of that. You have a little bit of a give and take with some, the daytime thermals might hurt you a little bit by pulling it up. But in that situation, I'm gonna try to get a little bit higher up in the tree. So that those thermals might even blow right over the top of the deer if they are even in effect at all. But if you have a windy day or anything else, Typically, I'm, I'm not as worried as much about those thermals as I am that prevailing wind up here towards the top of the hill. Where the scrape is located and where the Sad Hill Trail is located isn't necessarily right on the top, but it's just over the edge. It's, it's a little bit flatter, but it's still on a grade of the side of the hill here. And some of the main trails are coming out of the side of the steep draw, and they're all meeting in this location. They're not way up on the open top, but just down over the edge is where they should like to travel. And I'm gonna throw a camera up here all year and see what happens. I'm, I'm going to run my Exodus cell camera. So my Exodus render, I'm gonna throw that up. I'm gonna put a solar panel on it to help with the battery life. There's good cell reception because we're on the top of the hill. And I'm really excited to see what this looks like as it develops throughout the year.